Welcome to Thinking is um, welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the twenty second day of November, in the year of our Lord twenty twenty three. Have to slow down. I get ahead of myself, which is <laughs> I move fairly slowly, so it's easy to get ahead of myself, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I want to talk about Gaza in uh, specifically right now. First of all, to Christians, if you support what the state of Israel, the Zionist state of Israel is doing. First of all, you're utterly ignorant about what Israel is, about who founded Israel, and about the scriptures. Because if you think that supporting that thing is doing the will of God, you're incredibly ignorant and foolish because it's not God's will. God does not approve of you supporting what that... uh, project that Zionist project has been doing for over 75 years, which is engaged in ethnic cleansing. Well, they violated three of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's possessions, thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not murder. And they broke all three of those. Other than also the commandments, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me, you shall not make any graven image. You could go down that whole list and find how they violated every single one of the Ten Commandments. So uh, generally, uh, not just a few people, but generally the whole project was started by secularist Jews, in other words, atheist Jews, that did not follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at all. They wanted to create an identity for the Jewish people, an apartheid state, in somebody else's land. That's the root of this whole thing over there. The Palestine was already occupied and had been for generations and generations and generations and generations. And so you decide to move in to your neighbor's house. That is a violation of the commandments of God. You're not invited. They didn't give their consent. And even when the early Zionists were buying land under the Ottoman Empire, the Ottomans had no idea what their end game was. They didn't realize that these people were planning to set up an independent state. Otherwise, you know, the Ottomans would have supported that. <laughs> would have no, no, they were surreptitiously buying land um, without disclosing what their real purposes were. But again, these were secularists; they were not believing Jews at all. And now you've got some crazy religious. So it's now then it was secular Zionism. Now it's worse; it's religious Zionism where they they, uh, utterly misuse God's words to justify genocide. Utterly misuse it. They have no right in Scripture to that land. None at all. None at all. If you actually know the Scriptures, unlike some of these preachers, which are utterly ignorant of Scripture for the most part, then you know that God's, uh, them, uh, their staying in the land was conditioned on their obedience to God and keeping his covenant. Well, that covenant you can't even keep anymore. It's obsolete. The covenant of Moses is completely obsolete. Can't keep it. Never could. It, was, it wasn't meant to be a way to life. It was a, meant to reveal your sinfulness, and it does that quite well. So they were only, uh, uh, say, if you don't keep the, co- uh, the covenant, you will be cast out of the land. And they were. Uh, The new covenant came in Christ, and they rejected their Messiah. And God gave them 40 years to repent, and they didn't do it. And they were booted out because of their unbelief, because of the rejection of God's salvation, because salvation is only in the Messiah, only in Christ. And they had more than adequate witness of that fact in the law and the prophets and the Psalms. Okay, so that's they have no right to that land. 
There is no God-given right to that land. God given, did not give it to them eternally. No, 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 no. So what are they doing? I mean, you, don't, you can't listen to the propaganda. And Israel has gotten really crazy on their propaganda and really bad with it. I mean, it is so obviously a pack of lies that it's almost funny if it wasn't for what they're doing. So you can't go by what they say, and you certainly can't go by what mainstream media says because they're all, well, hirelings. And the, the American, you know, the, what, what we've seen is what's going on over there. I mean, in your face, genocide and ethnic cleansing is what it is. And let me get to that right now. Uh, don't go by what they say, go by what they do. That's just a good rule of thumb. And Jesus said, you shall know the false teachers, the false prophets by their fruit, by what they do, what they produce. Uh, false prophets always say good things, but they don't produce them. They, they say things to, that people want to hear. True prophets say what people don't want to hear. God sends people, prophets to people that aren't listening. God never sent prophets to, to his obedient people because you don't need a prophet. A prophet was like the last warning to warn of what's going to happen because of their disobedience. So anyway, back to, uh, to uh, uh, Israel. Uh, there's no, they have no right to that land at all. It's, and a new covenant has come in, a far, 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 far better covenant, the eternal covenant, which was brought in by Jesus Christ. And his own blood is the blood of that covenant. There is salvation in no one else. There is forgiveness in no one else. There's no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved other than his name. In whatever language you happen to use it, it's not, uh, but you have to call upon Jesus or Yeshua or Isa or Jesus or I've just run out of languages. Uh, so that's it. Whatever language that that name is in your language, the Son of God, the one who died for our sins and rose from the dead. You have to receive him. You have to throw your, put yourself in his hands. Surrender to him. Trust in him, what he did. You don't have to understand much, but you have to understand that much. And God will call you. God will lead you. God will convict you of the truth of who Christ is, if you want to know the truth. If not, well, you don't. God will leave you in your sins. You will die in your sins. Outside of Christ, you die in your sins. And you will stand before the judgment seat of God clothed in your sins rather than clothed in God's righteousness in Christ. Not a good choice. As Jesus made absolutely clear in, in his ministry. Without the wedding garment, you get cast out. And the wedding garment is the righteousness of Christ. A gift. A gift to all who come. Who all who come to Christ. He clothes you with his righteousness. Because your garments are filthy. All our righteousness is as filthy rags. God said in Isaiah. It's his righteousness we have to have. So what's going on in Israel? Go at, look at what they do and not what they say. So what, are, what is Israel based on that, on that uh, assumption or on that, uh, what shall we say, law, that the, a person's deeds show what they really believe and what they're really doing? <laughs> yeah, what you're doing demonstrates what you're doing. Okay, so you look at the facts of what they're doing. So what are they doing in Gaza? It has nothing to do with Hamas. Hamas is like 200 feet underground from various reports. Israel is not even attempting to get to Hamas. They don't care. They don't care. See, their real plan, Hamas will become irrelevant anyway. And I'll show you why. Their real plan is to take all the land from the river to the sea. That's Israel's plan. And even beyond that. 
some of Lebanon, some of Syria, more, more of Syria. Who knows? The, one of the original statements in the Old Testament was from the Euphrates to the river of Egypt. Uh, whether or not that was the brook, the uh, uh, wadi in the Sinai or the Nile itself. It's not really clear. But that doesn't belong to them anyway. It belongs to God. It's God's land. All the earth is God's land. But this is an ideology and a uh, combined with a very uh, unbiblical, twisted religion. It's not a rejection of God's truth. See, Judaism rejects the Messiah, explicitly rejects the Messiah, hates Jesus Christ. Orthodox Judaism, if you just read some of the Talmud, it's very clear. And basically hates everything that's not Jewish. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not a Jew, well, you're on the uh, do not survive list. The, the attitude in the Talmud toward toward Gentiles to non-Jews is, well, you wouldn't want them for, for your neighbors if they could do what they want to do and not be restrained by authorities over them. It's in, it's in the Talmud. It's in there. I don't want to go into the details, but... Basically, the rabbis teach in the Talmuds that, uh, Talmud that non-Jews are not fit to live. It's better that we just die. And that's what they're doing in Gaza. That's why some of the bold and outrageous statements you hear uh, are coming out of Israel from government authorities, uh, things they're teaching their children, everything else, is, is it's so bizarre to the rest of the world is because we don't realize how hostile they are to everyone. As the Apostle Paul says, they're, they're hostile to all men. These, these people are uh, the descendants of the Pharisees, and they hold to the, the doctrines of the Pharisees, which are human tradition, what they call the oral Torah or the tradition of the elders, what's referred to in the Scripture. Uh, rab rabbis, just ra what this rabbi said that, and ra that rabbi said something else. Uh, it is, uh, take your pick, which rabbi you want to follow. It's a collection of rabbinical sayings, that's what it is. It's what the Talmud is, and some of those rabbis are really, really bad. They have taken the, taken the idea of Israel being a chosen people and twisted it and made it satanic. Uh, and to follow those kind of ideas produces the actions we see. The whole world sees now. They have exposed themselves before the whole world. They have, uh, they have their uh, Holocaust victim card no longer is going to play. They, they've, they've forfeited that. Their trump card has been used, and now it's no longer in play. They have, uh, and they continue to do this. And the United States continues to back them to the hilt. The United States government, showing what the United States government is, too. They're fully complicit. They're not only complicit in genocide, legally, but, uh, in fact, legally, if you don't, uh, in, what was this, Czech, uh, um, Serbia, Serbia was uh, convicted of genocide, for, for being complicit in genocide, for not acting to prevent it or stop it. The United States is not only actively, is actively preventing the United Nations from taking action in the Security Council, blocking actions that will, would stop the, active, the, the immediate genocide that's going on in Gaza, Plus, the United States is rearming and resupplying the Israelis with the very weapons and bombs and uh, other ordnance that they are using to kill the inhabitants of Gaza in a nothing but a pure act of genocide. Systematic genocide. It's like li the, the Nazis liquidate, liquidating the Warsaw Ghetto. It's the same thing. How ironic. 
but how typical of sinful humanity. They're hardly the only ones that have done things like this. The Ottomans, I mean, Islam, the whole history of Islam is filled all the way back to Muhammad with acts of genocide. Muhammad ordered acts of genocide against other tribes in Arabia. One of them Jewish. Wiped them all out. Because they did not accept the prophet. The so-called prophet. The self-called, self-claimed prophet. Because that's all he has, is his own words. Because he has no miracles. He had no evidence that he's a prophet at all, other than he claimed to be one. And that's fact to this day. So you want to follow a man that is as sinful as everybody else and has a God who endorses that stuff? I don't think so. Now, there is only one true God. And Muhammad claimed there's one true God. But his revelation of that God is not the revelation of the true God. Not in much at all. Mohammed's own actions demonstrate his ideas of God. They seem to have been very self-serving. His revelation in the Quran seems to be very much self-serving when it comes to Muhammad. Like the actions of a sinful human being. This is just typical of the kind of stuff. False prophets have always done things like this. In the United States, we've had a boatload of false prophets. People like Joseph Smith and others, many others. They gather followers around themselves for their own purposes. have a whole boatload of them. The Internet's filled with people like this. People like Muhammad. And his followers, their history is bloody. And now Israel demonstrates they are of the same character. They are fallen human beings, doing what fallen human doing, beings do when you take the restraints off them. What's going on in the world today? The restraints have been removed, apparently, and people are demonstrating what they really are. Bloody murderers, liars, thieves, adulterers, sexual perverts, all over the place. Enemies of God. The vast majority of humanity, hostile toward God doing whatever they want. The White House, demonstration of the wickedness of, huma of humanity, supporting a, Israel in its manifest genocide and ethnic cleansing. So you look at what Israel is doing. Are they fighting against Hamas? No, they're not. Are they going down in the tunnels? No, they're not. What are they doing? Those are just an excuse. They used. They were already planning this from the beginning of Israel. The Zionist state, they were planning to ethnically cleanse. Whenever they had the opportunity, that's what they do. They push and push and push. Uh, they've never been interested in peace with the Palestinians. Not truly, no, because that's not part of their ideology. Their ideology is uh, uh, from, at least from the river to the sea. Jews only. Put a sign on the border, Jews only. They don't really care if you're an atheist or... Something else, but Jews only. That's their ideology. That's Zionism, a land for the Jews. You know that's what Zionism is, right? A land for the Jews, Jews only. Uh, Arabs, you might let them as your slaves, but only in that sense, as a not quite fully human subclass that, you know, are your servants, cheap labor. That's all. Because we don't really want to work. 
there for. Uh, we'll, we'll allow others to exist if they serve us and serve our needs. Yeah, that's that's humanity. It's not tic- this particular people. This this is humanity in general. That's common. Always been common. Still is today. So what are they doing? Why are they bombing hospitals? Why are they bombing UN schools? Why are they blowing up universities? Why did they blow up the parliament building in Gaza? Why did they do these things? Because they want to make Gaza uninhabitable. So it, it, whether they kill the, the inhabitants of Gaza or drive them out, it doesn't make any difference as long as they're not in Israel. They're going to take this piece of land. There'll be nothing but concrete rubble and everything else. I don't know. Where you can... uh, I suppose they can extend the coastline by bulldozing, bulldozing that all off into the sea. But And there's a gas and oil field off coast there they want to. Covet in your neighbor's possessions. So their plan is, obviously, it's, this is obvious from their actions. You destroy Gaza to such a degree that the inhabitants of Gaza have nothing to return to. That's what they're doing. They drove the ones in the north part of Gaza south, and the ones that didn't leave, they're simply murdering. Uh, and even while they're driving them south, they bomb them, strafe them, do everything else to get them to hurry on their way, I suppose. Or they don't care. They're just dead. Uh, the only good, uh, the only good Palestinian is a dead Palestinian. To quote, was it Sherman? Was he the one that said that? The only good Indian is a dead Indian. Same attitude. Genocide. Same same attitude. Uh, it's, see again, it's, it was in America too. This is a global kind of thing. Uh, so America had their their genocidal acts, and Israel is doing that right now, in front of the whole world. with American support. So if you destroy the, the hospitals, if you destroy the schools, if you destroy the, the bakeries, if you destroy all the infrastructure, uh, the streets, it's like Israel and the West Bank, they use those huge D9 caterpillars with the, uh, the fork and the, the, the tooth in the back to drive down the streets and rip the street deliberately. Deliberately in the West Bank, destroy the streets. Uh, and those t- teeth, because they go down, uh, say, three feet, will rip through the subsurface infrastructure, plumbing, electrical, all that stuff, under the street surface, just tear it up. Israel, you don't have cold enough winters to have deep frost, so you don't have to bury very deep. So those, they, they deliberately destroy the street and the infrastructure routinely in the West Bank along with the house of some perpetrator, come in and bulldoze the house. And and if the people don't get out of the house, they bulldoze the house with the people in them. That's what they do. That's Israel. I've seen some of the stuff over there in person. Just absolute wickedness. That's humanity. God is exposing humanity because judgment's coming. Because judgment's coming, and all creation will say God is justified in what he does by condemning these people. Everyone who's not in Christ, they're demonstrating what they really are. And they are making Gaza uninhabitable so there's nothing to return to. The people in the south can't return to their homes in the north because there's nothing there but rubble. There is no facilities. There is no infrastructure. There's no water. There's no sewage. There's no schools. There's no hospitals. There's no apartment buildings left. Just piles of rubble. By deliberate act and intent. And then they'll move farther south and do it again and do it again until nothing is standing in Gaza 
That's their plan, unless the world stops them. They just want the Palestinians gone. They want to put the sign up on the Jewish border, Jews only. Just like America had signs on some buildings and drinking fountains, whites only. That's what's going on in Gaza, in my opinion, based on what I see. And what I see are the facts. Those buildings really are being destroyed. Israel really is attacking and demolishing hospitals and everything else they can. They're, they're destroying everything that's in Gaza. They're not actually trying to go after Hamas at all. That's only an excuse for what they really wanted to do, which is what they're doing. 